uh, chapter three, we're on systems of linear equations and inequalities, and we are going to uh, start with 3.1, which is solving linear systems by graphing. Space, the final frontier. Basically, systems of two linear equations. Um, here's what it means. You have uh, one system with just x's and numbers on one side, as in like um, ax plus by equals c, so like a 3x plus 5y equals 6. Um, and then you have another uh, equation right below it, as in like maybe a 4x plus 7y equals 8. And what you do is you graph them both, and we're going to see where they cross. Got to be really careful when you enter into his territory. Got to play by his rules. So when we're doing this problem, it says check to see if um, these solutions work. So check to see if 2, 2, and 0, negative 1 are solutions. So what that means is I have to take this, and this is your x and y, and plug it in. But it has to work in both equations. When we're talking about systems, everything has to work in both items. So what I mean by that is I'm going to take this 2, 2, and I'm going to plug it in here. And it has to work for both. So that's what I'm doing here. 3 times 2 minus 2 times 2 equals 2. And down below here, I plug a 2 in for x and a 2 in for y. So 3 times 2 is 6. 2 times 2 is 4. 6 minus 4 is 2. So the top one works. Uh, on the bottom, 2, and that's 4. So that's 2 plus 4, which is 2. So that one works. And we get 6 on that side and 6 on that side. So the point is, each of those work. Since both of those work, 2, 2 is a solution to this problem. 2, 2 is a solution. It's where they both work. All right, so let's try plugging in 0 and negative 1. Well, when I plug in 0 and negative 1, 0 goes in for x, negative 1 for y. 0 for x, negative 1 for y. When I plug in a 0 here, I get 0, and negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. So I end up with 2 equals 2, which is true. That's great. But remember, it has to work for both items. As you can see down here, if I plug in a 0 and a negative 1, I actually end up with negative 2 equals 6, which is false. Since one of those is false, that's enough for me to say that 0, negative 1 is not a solution to the problem. What do you want? So now we're going to talk about graphing these, which is basically what this whole section is about. So what we need to do in order to graph these is we need to solve the equations. So what we're going to do is we, uh, if we try to solve the top for y and make an equation, we'll get a fraction, right? So instead of trying to solve that one and getting some type of weird fraction equation, why don't we use the x and y intercept method of just plugging in and finding what the x and y intercepts are and drawing a line to connect it. So what I'm saying here is if I plug a 0 in for x, right, plug a 0 in, that means that's gone. I solved this little uh, problem here, negative 3y equals 1. Since it's negative 3 times y, I just divide both sides by negative 3, and I get y equals negative 1 third. So there's my first point that I can plug in. The next one says, hey, why don't we take y and put a 0 in for y? And when I do that, I end up with 2x equals 1, and I divide both sides by 2, so I get x equals 1 half. So there are my two points. So to plot these, 0, negative 1 third is here. It means I go over nothing and I go down a third. 1 half 0 means I go over about a half and up nothing, and I connect those two points with a straight line. And there it is. Who are you? Now the next one should be a little easier to graph, this uh, x plus y equals 3. That I can solve for y to actually solve this one. So when I do that, I get y equals negative 3 plus, th or negative x plus 3. Since a positive x, I subtract x on both sides. And remember, you can't combine them together, because 1 is an x and 1 is just a number. So negative x plus 3. What that means is I find my uh, y-intercept, which is 3, and I put a point right there. And negative means it's negative 1, which means I go down 1, and I go right 1, down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1, and I draw a line and connect it. Now, to physically solve this problem, the answer to this problem is where the two lines intersect. Where these two lines cross each other, that is my answer. So I did not use the x and y intercept for the second graph because, let's face it, it was just easier to make it in y intercept form and solve. So the answer to this problem is where the graphs intersect. And they intersect at 2, 1, this point right here, which means the answer to this problem, 
the answer for this problem is 2, 1. It's where the two lines cross. In the wild, there is no health care. In the wild, health care is... So... Oh, I hurt my leg. I can't run. A lion eats me, and I'm dead. To solve each of these, uh, we need to basically solve them for y, is what we're going to try to do here, and find the y-intercepts and graph it. So starting at the first one, to solve this for y, I'm going to actually, since it's a positive 3x, subtract a 3x on both sides. So we get negative 2y equals negative 3x plus 6. And from there, I can divide um, both sides by negative 2, uh, because it's negative 2 times y. So when I do this, I divide both by y, and I get y equals uh, negative 3 divided by negative 2 is 3 over 2. 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3. So what I'm actually looking at here is an equation that has 3 halves x minus 3. So let's take a look at this one now. To get negative 4 by itself, I would subtract a 6x onto both sides. Uh, because it's a positive 6x, so that cancels out. So I have negative 4y equals negative 6x plus 12. To get y by itself, it's negative 4 times y, so I can divide everything by negative 4. And when I do that, that means I divide each of these. So I get negative 6 divided by negative 4, which is 6 over 4. 12 divided by negative 4, which is uh, negative 3. Well, actually, in all honesty, I can simplify 6 over 4 to 3 over 2. Now, wait, 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 wait one second here. I solve both of these, and I actually find out that I get the same exact answer. I get 3 halves x minus 3 and 3 halves x minus 3. So when I go to graph this, there's minus 3, right? That means I go up 3 over 2, up 3 over 2, up 3 over 2, and connect it with a line. To graph this line right here, I go down 3. There it is. I plot my y-intercept. I go up 3 over 2, up 3 over 2, and I connect it with a line. What that means is, since the lines are exactly the same, what is the answer to this problem? Hmm, well, that's a curious question. Since each line is exactly the same, and each line is literally the same over top of each other, the answer is that there are infinitely many solutions. Every answer on that line is an answer. This point down here is, this point right here is, this point right here is, this one, this one, this one. Those are all answers. There's hundreds of thousands of answers because those two lines are exactly the same and they're going to overlap each other. So each of those lines has infinitely many answers to it. So when I take a look at this graph, okay, I want to solve each of those. So to solve this, I subtract 3 on both sides like we did the last problem. I end up with negative 2y equals negative 3x plus 6. I divide both those by negative 2 and because it's negative 2 times y, right? So I get y equals negative 3 divided by negative 2, which is positive 3 over 2, 6 divided by negative 2, which is negative 3. The next one over here, I do the same thing. I subtract the 3x on both sides. So I get negative 2y equals negative 3x plus 2. And I divide both of these by negative 2, which means I get uh, 3 over 2, because negative 3 divided by negative 2 is 3 over 2. 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. So those are my two equations to graph. So I go down 3, put a point. My slope is up 3, right 2, up 3, right 2, put points and connect them with a line. I graph the next one, which means I go down 1, plot the point. Then I go up 3, right 2, up 3, right 2, put a point, draw a line and connect it. So the, the answers to these systems of equations are wherever they cross each other. That's your answers. Well, where do these two lines cross? Where do they cross? They never cross. They never cross each other because they have the same slope. So if they're the same slope, they're parallel lines. So if I have two parallel lines, that means they are never going to intersect each other. And if they never intersect, right, if the two lines are never going to intersect, then there is no answer to the problem. With a 900 years old, you reach look as good as you are not. Hmm? So we'll finish up 3.1 when we come back here on graphing systems of equations and finding the solutions.